Hi folks, Mike Lambeau here and I'm going to play through Mission 3 of the Fields of Normandy 2 just to give you some, some idea of how it plays and explain some of the rules as we go through. Probably won't get to cover everything simply because a lot can happen and we may well not get to see all of those possibilities. Um, however, here is Mission 3. I've done a video which explains the differences between the Fields of Normandy 2 and its predecessor, the Fields of Normandy. So if you're interested in that aspect, uh, then have a look at that video. Uh, so I'm not going to dwell too much on the differences as we go through, just explain uh, you know, what I'm doing and why and so on as we go here. So I'm, I'm generally set up. I've got um, the 12 question marks or 12 potential enemy positions. I'm using the counters that come with the book. So I've just put the question marks on top of the question marks that are pre-printed on there. So you could, of course, be using pens and acetate. You can just cross those out as you find them. But I'm putting the counters on. I'm just going to remove them as I go. I've got my full platoon down here for this mission. So I've got three rifle squads, bazooka, machine gun team and mortar team. And um, I've already decided what I'm going to do. So I've got this great lake in the middle here. This is... Um, called the lake this mission there are lakes on other missions but that's obviously going to disrupt i can't enter these hexes so i'm going to have to go either side because i've got positions that need clearing so straight away i've got a decision to make i've got to set up in these two hexes here and i think i'm going to send my main forces up here to start with i'm going to send the bazooka unit over here which is good at attacking buildings so see how that gets on take some rifle support with it also rifled squad with it i should say um the mortar team is going to be tricky because whichever way they go, they're not really going to be able to help effectively um, the other uh, group that goes the other way. So I really want to probably just put them there to start with because they can support attacks on these hexes. They attack two hexes away as they did in the first game, so uh, or support two hexes away, I should say, support attacks on those units. We'll see how that works when we get there. So I'm thinking maybe something like that, maybe slightly light on this side. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So this is turn one, 10 turns. So these games are meatier, they're longer than the Fields of Normandy 1. I tend to take a uh, best part of an hour or so. This might take a little longer because I'm explaining it as we go, but we'll see. I'll try and move fairly quickly. So I'm going to start over here. I'm going to start with my Rifles 1 squad and my priority immediately is to try and clear this hill be useful then to use that hill to attack these woods or at least to help so we'll see how we go although i'm conscious this hex is clear if i move into this woodland here i'm going to reveal both of those at once which is probably never a good idea if it can be avoided so we'll see how we go anyway let's see what rifles one gets it's got a double three and three is move and grenade so units can move and then throw a grenade now uh, so do we want to do that we could re-roll those, of course, but I think I'll probably start with um, an offensive mindset for this one. So let's get on with it. Let's so we can move the rifle squad into there. I like to place the die next to the squad just to remind me what they rolled. And then I use two other die for the actual um, attack and revealing the unit and so on. So I don't forget what I'm doing. So rifles one, they move there. That's going to reveal this uh, position here, which is now adjacent to them, of course. So we found on this hill, number seven in the German chart is a light machine gun. And that, uh, as ever in the first game as well, is placed facing the unit that found it. I can now do my grenade attack. I don't suffer a penalty for moving and then chucking a grenade. So I'm just going to lob it up onto the top of this hill, hopefully get it in the machine gun nest and take that out. Grenades are a seven plus to hit always with no modifiers and I've rolled an eight luckily so the LMG unit is destroyed straight away. So I'm going to, now I'm going to go for rifles two. See what they get. They've got a one and a six. Now they can scout with that. They don't want to rally of course because they are already full morale or they could do a move and fire. So I could move them into the woods and then fire again. Rifle units don't suffer a penalty for moving and firing. So I could then fire at them, but they do fire on a nine plus, which is not great. And because they're in the woods, that would be a 10 plus. And of course, I haven't yet moved my mortar squad up to here, which I probably should have done at the start. Tactical error number one, Mike. Well done, uh, which would then be supporting the attack. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is be more cautious because I've already had one decent result up here. I'm going to do the one here. I'm not going to rally, but I'm going to scout. Remember, a full morale unit can perform both of the orders for the one die. So you choose the one die you want to take, and then you can perform both of those orders in either sequence. So I could, you know, here move and then fire or fire, then move. 
So that's a slight difference from the first game. Fields are normally one where you had to perform them in the order they were printed. So now you can swap and change what you do there. There are also new orders on here, which I'm sure we'll get to see uh, in operation as we go. So I'm going to scout. Remember the same same rules as Fields are normally one. You scout two hexes away exactly. So one, two, we can scout this position here. So I roll the dice on the German chart, and that gives me a rifle squad. So it's a German rifle squad up, uh, sorry, in these woods here, buried in these woods. So that appears here. Now, because I scouted them, I can choose their facing, but it has to be one of the three hex edges facing down the map. And that would be true even if I'd scouted them from over here or up here, because generally, you know, the Germans were facing, re you know, ready for the attack by the US. Uh, so they, you know, they're not, not going to be sat facing that way, you know, not that stupid. Uh, they're going to be facing one of these ways here. Now I've scouted them, so I get to choose, um, and I'm probably going to face them that way towards this lake, because then I can get onto this hill and attack them from outside their fire zone, which works in the same way as the first game. So their fire zone is the hex they're facing at and the two hexes adjacent to them either side of that one. So these sort of three hexes here. OK, so I'm going to place them like that. The other good thing about what I've done there is uh, because I rolled a three, this is actually a rifle squad with a sniper attached. So they do have a sniper in their rifle squad. Fortunately, because I scouted them, that has no effect. If I'd found them, if I'd moved in there and found this squad, they would have, first of all, faced me, of course, in the normal way. But also the sniper would have then taken a shot and it's an auto hit. My rifle squad would be reduced to low morale. So it's good. So the reason I've done that mainly is to make the scout order even more attractive than it was before. So it makes it a, a real dilemma as to whether to scout or not. It's obviously quicker to have moved and fired at them. Chances of hitting them were pretty low, but scouting them is you know really useful. It's avoided the sniper fire and allowed me to choose their facing. But of course, it means I can't move, which slows me down. So it's, it's all about balancing, clearing these with this timer at the bottom. MG squad, then let's try an MG team. They get uh, double six, so they can move and fire. So this is something else that's new in this version. MGs can now move and fire only on a six. Obviously, they could fire and move as well, but they can move and fire, but they do do that at a plus one penalty. If they move and then fire in the same turn in that sequence, uh, the plus one is in blue to remind you that only applies if you move. So they would suffer a plus one penalty. So I could again push them forward here. They fire on a seven plus generally. Uh, sorry, I've not, not got that particular chart up here. I've limited the information I put here just because uh, I don't, don't want to give too much away at this stage. But MGs fire on a seven plus, which would be on a chart up here. And... Um, would be increased to eight because they've moved and increased to nine because they are in the woods and I'm not attacking from outside their fire zone. So no more bonus than that. So nine plus again, it's not a great um, statistical chance. So I'm probably going to re-roll because it's a double. You can always re-roll doubles if you like. You get a six and a three. Now three, again, I don't want to move and fire particularly. Six and three is cover and move. So this, what I'm going to do with them is just pop them in some cover uh, so put a, a cover marker on there, you can see that gives them a plus one bonus. Um, and leave it there for now, and we'll deal with those rifles. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm talking about it. It's a move and cover order. I'm going to move them out here and then pull them into cover. Okay, ready to get onto this hill and help. All right, so move and cover. Again, you can see this, it's like the, the order is actually cover and move, but I can do that in either order. So I've moved and then found some cover. So this MG finds his cover. You can only have one cover marker now on a, any particular unit. Again, that's a difference to the first game where you could stack them. And the cover, cover marker applies only to the MG, not the rifle squad. They'd have to find their own cover. When the MG leaves, loses, leaves the hex, I should say, the cover marker is removed and would have to find new cover, as would the rifle's unit. So cover is personal to the particular unit that finds it. So that's that side done. Let's go over here. Again, we've got, we've got this particular um, question mark to deal with. Let's see what rifles three get. Two and a five doesn't sound much use to me. They can rally and fire, but they can't fire at anyone because you're going to fire adjacent. And they can co find cover or assault. But again, you can only assault a unit that's adjacent to you. So all they can do, I'm afraid, is find some cover, which although there is no German unit adjacent, so it won't be firing at them. If artillery was to appear, that could come down and the cover will help at that point. So it's always worth putting the cover on if you if you get the option. Um, I'm probably not going to move the bazooka up to find out what's in here because the bazooka can't, well, it could shoot if it was a half track, but it's probably, you know, it's a, it's a fairly slim chance of it being a half track. Uh, bazookas, bazookas can only, you know, attack big things like half tracks and tanks and any unit in a building. Um, 
and artillery pieces. So let's see what they get anyway. They get a double six, which for a bazooka is move and fire. I don't want to do that. I'm going to re-roll re that as a double. Don't want to move and fire again. Don't want to do that either. Two and three. Again, it's a cover and move. I'm not going to move. I'm just going to pop them into cover there. Uh, the mortar. Let's see what he gets. One and four. And he can't really do much with that other than get a bit of cover on him as well, which we might as well do again. I really want to get him moved into there, but let's see what happens next turn. The Germans won't do anything. This rifle squad would fire at everyone in these hexes here, but obviously there's no one in the lake and there's no one in these woods. Turn two. Not bad. Fairly good start. Let's push on. So let's take rifles one first and try and get them up on this hill to see what they can do. One, three, that'll do. So the three will push them up there. It's a move and grenade order. So same as before, we're going to get up onto that hill. And we're going to lob a grenade at these rifles. Now, grenades always attack, remember, on a seven plus, regardless of any kind of cover or hills or smoke or anything. Just, you know, chuck in a grenade and see what happens. Or a couple of grenades, or a few grenades, into this rifle squad. See if we can get them to um, go. See if we can remove them. So again, it's a seven plus, and we've got a nine this time. So we've been fairly lucky. It's more or less a 50-50 chance with a grenade, so we got, you know, fairly lucky getting two out of two there. Slightly more than 50% chance, actually. So that's gone, so my rifle squad has moved and thrown a grenade. So my MG now can hopefully move fairly safely. Gets a 1-4, that's a 4, is a move to cover. So what will actually happen is the MG will move, by which it will lose its cover. Uh, I'm going to move it onto the hill, actually. But then, because it's a move and cover order, it finds new cover. OK, so I oh know a little rocky outcrop or something. And it goes, sets up. Rifles two, get a three and six. They're both, one, one's a move and cover. One, sorry, one is a move and grenade. Let's get the right chart, Mike. One is a move and grenade. One is a fire and move or move and fire. So they're both move orders, but that's all. because so they can't attack anything or chuck a grenade at anything. You can only attack, as I say, adjacent hexes. But let's push them in the woods anyway, because they will get plus one cover for being in the woods if there was to be. In fact, if there's an artillery attack, they wouldn't get attacked at all in the woods because they're deemed not to be able to not, not to be spotted. But we'll deal with that if it comes um, up. Over here, then rifles three. Let's go with them first. See what they get. They get a one six. Okay, again, we've got that choice to make. Think how aggressive you want to be. Obviously, as the, as, as things get later in the in the mission. If you feel you you know you're running out of time a little bit, then at that point I'll be you know I would be moving and firing at every chance I get. But at the moment. I feel like I want to scout that position again. So I'm going to use the one. It's a rally and scout. They don't need to rally, but they can scout this question mark. So let's do that. See what's there. It's a 10. OK, oh, that's not very really good. All right. So that's a 10, which is actually the tank. Now, the tank in this mission only appears in turns uh, if the turn tracker is less than five. And at the moment, the turn tracker is uh, on two. So it will appear. Uh, the tank always appears in the hex that has a T in it. Obviously, that differs for every mission. And what the tank does is we'll follow this line of arrows. OK, now the only unit that can get rid of, or the only way to get rid of a panzer is to uh, shoot it with your bazooka or um, assault it with a rifle squad at close range. Uh, the, the panzer generally will shoot at every US unit around it. It doesn't have a facing for that reason, so it shoots every unit around it. It's got machine guns, turrets and all sorts. Uh, and it will move down this line, as I say, of arrows each turn. It will move one hex down. That's a real nuisance for us because we have got these three guys trying to get up here and we don't really want to be shot at by this panzer. You know, we, we haven't got much here that can destroy it as they, other than a possible assault. But you can only assault on a five, so we take, we'd be taking a risk with that. Um, and we've got to get up close to it to do that. The MG is no good against the tank. So... We've really got to start thinking about what we're going to do there. If we we can't move on to the track where the tank's coming, so if the tank moves into the same hex as a US unit, it will automatically destroy that unit. So we've got to keep out its way. But this is a bad one to get an early tank on this mission. So that's caused us a real problem over there. And it's, I'm thinking about whether I should now send this rifle squad around here as well and get more forces up there and maybe, you know, join up over here somewhere once the tank's gone. But let's think about that uh, as we move on. Um, so we've just scouted that position. So that position is cleared, but has caused a tank to arrive over there. OK, um, so that's rifle three done. So we've got the bazooka now can happily move up. Hopefully gets a double three. That's moved to cover a three. So we'll think we'll take that. And sorry, so he moves up into the woods and regains the cover. And the mortar team 
uh, mortar is the mortar can provide support against the tank but obviously it's only useful if the bazooka is going for it so i've already decided i'm going to do that we don't need the mortar might as well just go this way now uh, a four is a uh, again he's not got a gotten a move he should be able to move faster than he's doing here he's got three move orders in here and we're rolling two dice so he should get a move order most turns but he hasn't got one again so he's sat back there with his rifles i need to get moving over there now and that i think is my second turn done so the germans then act there are no units on the border than the panzer so it will fire first of all fires at every u.s unit around it as i say there aren't any then it moves down the road i have to worry too much about which way you face it because it doesn't have a facing it will attack the whole way around it so it's coming down the road uh, we've seen it we know it's coming um we just got to think what we're going to do about it and we move on to turn number three Okay, let's push up on this side. I'm going to move the mortar team, I hope. Yes, that's good. Mortar, so let's move to cover. So let's move the mortar squad, mortar team up into these woods and they'll re retain their cover because they've got to move to cover order or at least they'll officially, you know, technically they lose their cover and then re-find it in the woods. Uh, rifles, got a 1-4. Uh, that's a move to cover a force. I'm going to take that. They can't scout anything from here because that's three hexes away, unfortunately. So we can't do that. So we'll move up to there. And then I'm going to do my bazooka team. Now, this is a building, obviously. This is a farm here. So um, whatever's in there, we can hit with the bazooka because it's in a building. So hopefully he'll get a five or a six. So bazookas have got two move and fire orders here. So both five and six does that. So I'm going to do that with this bazooka. So what it's going to do then is it's going to move into these woods. It will lose its cover because it's moved out the hex where it found that cover. So it's left the, I don't know, fallen tree or whatever it was that it had. It's gone into these woods here and it still can fire. It's a move and fire order. So you just need to remember to do that so i'll leave the five next to it we're going to reveal then what is in this farm and we've revealed oh dear that's the one thing we didn't want to get so a six is mines okay a six is mines now no point firing because you can't fire at mines obviously i've run into a real problem here though the chances of this happening were fairly slim but this is what i mean by you know each mission will play out very very differently but getting a minefield on this narrow stretch on this side of the lake and having a tank trundling down the road ever so slowly here means that both sides now have kind of come to a bit of a stop and it may be that i'm going to have to just go through this minefield which is um obviously something that's not a good idea you can see a mine mines generally hit on a seven plus which reminds me they found this minefield if they scouted it from if a rifle squad had scouted it from two hexes away you would just reveal it and that's it and it sits there for the rest of the game because they found it they're deemed to have wandered into the edge of it and possibly set a mine or two off so the mines are going to instantly attack with a seven plus fortunately we rolled a four so the bazooka stays as full morale they would have dropped to low morale had they been hit by that Okay, we've done that side. Now we've got to think about what's going on here. And this is rather problematic. I think I'm going to push my rifle squad because this tank is going to move into here at the end of this turn. So let's get the rifle squad up. So that three is move grenade, six is move and fire. So that both allows them to move up to there. So we'll do that. This rifle squad, uh, double five... No, that's just a cover and assault order, which is no good yet. Um, the double five can be re-rolled. Also for, for rifle squad, something new this time, a double, a, a double is also a cover and artillery order. So they can take cover, but also call in an artillery strike, which is new for the Fields of Normandy too. That would be an eight plus hit on all revealed German units. Unfortunately, except the tank. Okay, so artillery is not going to be able to destroy that tank. So there's no point doing that. Uh, I don't want to do the cover assault. I can't do the assault. So let's roll. They get a 1-6. So again, they're just going to use that as a move. Or are they? No, they're not actually. They're going to stay there and use it as a scout order. So this question mark is two away. So actually this rifle squad is going to scout this position here. It's a 10. Now a 10 is a tank. 
but because we've already got the tank on the board, you only have one tank at a time, it won't um, do that, but we do unfortunately have to re-roll. So we re-roll for a six and we get another minefield. Okay, it's only a six for mines. So they're not going to come up that often, but we've got another one there. That's not so problematic. We can still get through and you know, we get into this farm, which is probably the way we'd have gone anyway to deal with this and then move pushed around. So that's OK, actually. We, we can just leave that. OK, we can we would the objective to winning the game is to clear the map of German units, positions and units. But mines, obviously, they're there. We can't do anything about them. They just stay there. So we can still win with mines on the board is what I'm trying to say. Just the MG to go. But I think for now... No, actually, we should probably, yeah, we should probably pull that back if we can. So move to cover. So this MG unit is going to move into these woods and retain its cover for now, away from the tank's path as it comes. OK, that's me. Uh, the Germans then, the Panzer will fire at all, the hex is around it, and then move into this farm. OK, move into this farm. Right, and we're on to turn four, and we have some real thinking to do now. We really do have some thinking to do. Um, okay, I think what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to go with rifles two first and hope that I get to assault this tank. So I need a five to do that. I wouldn't usually bother assaulting. Tanks will always move off the map of their own volition. Okay, That's why there is this turn limit before, after which they will not appear. So this tank has to appear on turns one to four. If it appeared on turn four, it would then move on turn four, turn five, turn six, and by turn seven, which is when the victory points kick in, it will automatically have left the map. And you will find that on every mission, if the tank appears, it always leaves a map by turns, the end of turn seven, <clears throat> which means you, you don't have to ever destroy it. You don't have to destroy it. But... I mean, if I sit back here and wait for it to move another two off the board, it's just wasting so much time. I feel like this time I want to try and destroy it. So I really want a five to assault it. It's the only way of getting rid of this tank with a rifle squad. So let's see what we get. Yes, we have got it. OK, we've got a three and a five. Now, this is a really dangerous thing to do. Um, and I'll explain why. OK, firstly, we're not using the three. That's a move and grenade order, but grenades are no good against tanks on their own. Not sort of chucking a grenade from, you know, from distance. Five is the assault and cover order. OK, so let's get a cover marker out just to remind me that I can do that. OK, first thing I'm going to do is assault this tank. So my rifle squad charge into this farm. OK, the panzer gets to fire back at my rifle squad, first of all. All right, now, if this wasn't a tank... If it was a unit with a facing, like an artillery, like a, um, an infantry unit or um, a half track or something, then it would only fire back if we were assaulting from within its fire zone. If we assaulted from behind, you know, then it wouldn't even get to fire back, which makes the assault an even better move. But because this hasn't got a facing, it's deemed to be, you know, it's got a turret and machine guns on and so on. So it's going to get us wherever we come from. So it gets to fire back. Right. Now, it fires back with a plus one penalty because we're charging at it and it's panicked and whatever, but no other factors apply. So, you know, I'm losing the cover I'm in. I would lose any cover I had or anything like smoke or anything like that. I was just running in and they're having a shot back at close range. Panzers attack on a six plus with their machine guns, generally, uh, down here, six plus, and uh, suffer the one penalty. So they need a seven plus to hit us. So let's see what happens. They get a four. Marvellous. We got away with it. OK, brilliant. So we're in. And then what happens is the tank is automatic. The unit we're assaulting is automatically destroyed. OK, automatically destroyed. Remember, we could well have been on low morale at this point because we could well have been hit by that panzer. Now, if we, you know, if we charge at an HMG, for example, that's going to fire back at us on its usual five plus penalised to six plus. But it's still a you know, really likely chance of hitting so you know as again as a, I don't need to explain running straight at machine guns is not a great idea but can be successful if you are in a bit of a desperate situation like we are down this side of the lake of course so we've done that and of course the other we've, that's the assault and the other side of the order is a cover order so I can take cover in that farm and I'm also in a farm which is great news because buildings give a plus two um, cover as well so I've got plus three cover so it's a great position to be in 
Now, I'm next to a question mark. So I still need to reveal that question mark in the same way as if I had moved into this. You know, this is this, whatever's here, if anything, has heard the commotion, seen the commotion, and this will now appear. And it appears as a six. So again, we have mines, incredibly. It's probably the most mines I've ever had at this stage. Three mines, obviously mined the area heavily, which again is fairly, you know, fairly true to form for Operation Cobra. You know, that's what the Germans had done. You know. So lots of minefields around. But that does mean it's not going to fire back at us. But we have, of course, found it. One of our guys has wandered into it. Have they been, you know, getting flanking the tank or whatever they did? So therefore, we do need to test for mines. And again, we've been lucky with a three. Needed a seven plus, of course, to be effective. So we have survived the mine strike. So can you see how when we assaulted that panzer, we could easily have been shot by the panzer to low morale. And then the minefield could have reduced our morale to zero effectively and removed us from the game. So it was risky and we got away with it really well. We got away with it really well. Rifles one then can now get moving again. Two five. Actually, they can't with that because there is no movement involved in those two orders, but they can take cover on the hill as part of five. Okay, you can't assault into an empty hex. If you, you can only assault where there's something to assault, so I can't you know use that to move. Uh, the MG gets a three six, and for him that's a three is good because it's moved to cover. So again, he will take his cover with him effectively and move into the woods hex. Okay, we've done all right over there. Now we've got to think about this side and I'm not sure really what to do here. Let's I think I'll just keep moving. Let's do the rifles three. Okay, they've got a double two there, which is rally fire. That's no good. Let's re-roll the double, if we can, of course. One and four is a move to cover. So again, the rifles are going to move up to where this bazooka is. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to take those two, as you can probably tell, through the minefield, which is not going to be a fun experience, but I'm going to do that. Um, let's roll for the bazooka anyway, because it might just get some cover on it. Yeah, it does with that. I can take the three. Pop some cover on there. Uh, let's go mortar. I don't really want to take that through the minefield. It's too important. Uh, so three is a move and smoke, so let's move the mortar down to there. It loses its cover, but it's not going to smoke anything because nobody's under any attack at the moment. That's the end of my turn. The German, there there are no units. So you can see how the you know the German turn is really fast generally. Uh, move on to turn five. I'm nearly halfway through. I'm still doing all right to say I've run into quite a lot of problems with this particular mission. But I do need to push up here. I feel a bit spread out. I really could do with getting everyone up you know together to support each other. It's really important to do that as we get into this busy area up here. And this farm on the hill here is always going to be difficult at the end. OK, let's get through this minefield, then let's have a go at it. So rifles three, they get a three and a five. So I'm going to take the three here and do a move grenade order. So they're going to move into the minefield, I'm going to move into the minefield with the three. And then that will reveal what is in this hex. I really don't want another blooming minefield. Okay, that's a light machine gun, which is probably just as bad. So in the middle of that field somewhere is a light machine gun. But we can then chuck a grenade at it. And remember, a 7 plus on grenades. We've been really lucky with grenades, and we still have. Wow, okay, that's another another successful grenade attack. So he, for now, sits there, okay? The, the mine tests come at the end in the German activation phase. You know, they only come immediately when you find the minefield. For an existing minefield, it'll happen at the end of the turn. Bazooka team has got rally cover or move and fire. So again, they're going to lose their cover because we're going to move and fire. But obviously we can't fire because there's nothing to fire at. So we've shifted them both into this farm. It's mined. We'll see what happens to them at the end of the turn. Let's move this bazooka on if we can. Three, six sounds like it's good. Yeah, it's a move to cover. They take the six, which is a move to cover. So we'll move them there and pop some cover on. Uh, let's shuffle. See, the one bad thing about these, well, the bad thing about these two minefields here is it just, or any minefield really, you know, it can block your way, but also just make it difficult to, you know, ideally we'd want to have come in here, I think, through these woods to here to take that unit out and then work in from the side to take that unit out and then yeah, maybe that unit and, and so on. 
because I've got to effectively come through here, really. I'm going to have to get into this hex at some point and reveal both of these at once, which can be problematic. So we've done the mortar. This rifle squad gets a 3-5, uh, so move grenade or cover an assault. Well, they're going to move. I'll move them into the woods. They lose their cover. The MG gets a 4-5. Again, they're doing pretty well. They get, there's a couple of move to covers for the MG, so they're generally pretty good at moving around in cover. So they move up into the farm as well here. Um, and the mortar, we've already done the mortar, haven't we? So we've just got, we've got rifles too to do. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to do anything with them. I might as well roll because I could scout, I suppose. I don't wanna, I'm not going to move him up there on his own. We've got a scout order. We rolled a one. So we're going to scout one of these hexes, which is going to help actually. Of course, that is one thing we can do. So I'm going to scout, I think I'll scout this woods hex up here. And we get a seven, which again is a light machine gun. So that goes in there. And we're going to face that. Yeah, it doesn't really help with the facing. It's got to be one of the downward facing hexes, but because we have to approach from this angle, whether we face it there, there or there, it's always going to be, you know, that hex is always going to be in its fire zone, whether it's there, there or there. So there's not much we can do, but we'll push it out that way anyway, I think. Yeah, those minefields are a nuisance, to say the least. Okay, that's me. I think this LMG won't do anything because there's nothing in its fire zone. So we go to turn six. No, we don't. Sorry, of course, what I'm saying. We haven't done the mines over here, have we? So rifle three suffers a seven plus hit. No cover, no modifiers, no nothing. Uh, it's a three. And the bazooka suffers a hit and it does get hit on a nine. So this bazooka has been hit. So what happens to a hit US unit is... If it's at full morale, it's then reduced to low morale. You can see the tokens here are distinct. The low morale unit is generally bordered in orange. And you can see there's a guy missing there uh, to show that it is a reduced unit. OK, can rally quite easily in this game now. One or two will rally all of the units uh, or each unit. Um, so you should be able to rally back. But, it does, but again, rallying is all you can do. If you do a rally, it's all you can do, and it slows you down. Of course, we want to get out of the minefield first. So rifle survived, bazooka got injured. Turn six. Exactly halfway there, and still really doing okay. You know, we've got one, two, three, four. We've got four to reveal and one there. We've just got five to deal with. We've dealt with seven, and we're halfway. So I think we're doing all right. So mines are good and bad because obviously you don't you know there's nothing you don't have to deal with them they just get in the way so you know they're good and bad so what are we going to do this time i'm going to do the bazooka mind you so i want to move the bazooka out of the minefield but of course if i move him there or there it's going to reveal units but i don't want to move him backwards so this is going to be a real problem let's i'm going to have to move the rifle squad out and see what happens so they get a three which is move grenade or a rally scout now usually i'd love to scout one of these two units but i don't want to leave my rifle squad in this minefield because at the end of the turn i'll have to test again for mines so that's unfortunate i'm going to take the three which is a move and grenade order so they are going to move into well, actually yes move into that hex of course so they're going to move this A here is where the artillery would appear if we found that. So it's quite good being in there anyway, because that stops artillery appearing. So we moved there with our threes, place that as reminders. It's a move and grenade order. We're going to reveal this question mark here, of course, which is a seven again. So we're getting lots of light machine guns and lots of mines. But then we had a rifle squad, of course, but there are also um, heavy machine guns, uh, half tracks and artillery, which we haven't seen any of yet. And then the rifle squad is going to get to have a go at that LMG. Remember, a rifle uh, grenade attack is always 7+. plus. So it's a great one to roll. Again, we've succeeded. Wow. I mean, that's probably four grenade attacks now. We've succeeded every single one of them. So that's good news. That's great news for the bazooka. So we, we desperately need a move order for the bazooka. Um, when a unit is low morale, remember, as in Fields of Normandy 1, they only get to perform the order in the first column. Okay, can't choose which one. It has to be the one in the first column. So their options are going to be one and two, which is to rally, which wasn't wouldn't be to the end of the world, because that means you know they would rally and stay there, but then if they got hit by a mine, they'd be back to where they were. But of course, it's slowing them down. We'd like to get the bazooka up to, to help with this farm, if necessary. Three will be cover, 
no use to us at the moment. Four is fire, which is no use to us at the moment. And then they've got two move orders down here at the bottom. So all units generally, when they're low morale, they're reduced from three possible moves down to two moves. And generally units can still take cover. They can still fire, but often the fire is a lot less. So MGs, for example, rather than firing on three rolls, they fire on one. The bazooka, instead of three, gets one and so on. So they just become less effectual or less effective, I should say. So this bazooka then really wants a five or six. Oh, three. I shouldn't have done that, should I? A bit of incoming artillery there, I think. Um, it's, fortunately, don't think it's nudged anything else as it took away the bazooka in his minefield. Right, so this bazooka is going to... Oops, LMG unit was there. Uh, the bazooka then needs a five or six. Here we get. It's got a four and five, so he has got a five. So we're going to take that five and we're going to move him out into these woods. So let's get him out of that minefield. Okay. So moving next to another mine, minefield doesn't cause any problems. It's only when you move next to a question mark and it reveals the mines that you have to take that instant hit. Okay. So we've got the bazooka out. So that's those two done. Let's see what we're doing over here. We've still got time. I do think we've still got time here. We're only on turn six. So I still want really, ideally I want my mortars in this farm to help to support attacks on these two units. But that's two turns away. I've got to decide whether I want to wait that long. Let's do the rifles one. They've got a one six, so they could scout, but they can't reach anyone from there. It's two hexes for scouting. Uh, they can fire and move. So I think I'm just going to move them up into the uh, farm. So I keep saying farm. Actually, this is a little village, I think, and this one tears you on the road here. It's a little village. Um, the difference is clearer. This is printed on my home printer, so the printing in the book is going to be slightly uh, better and clearer as well, I should say. This is slightly fuzzy on here for various reasons. Um, and the mortar gets a 5-6, which are both, well, one's cover and move, one's move and cover. I can do those in either order, of course. So I'm going to move to cover in there, which is good. So the rifles, and well, the, certainly the MG, I'm not going to bother move, doing anything with. He's in cover. There's nothing he could do that I would want to do. Can't fire at anyone. Don't want to move him. So, But the rifles, too, I'm going to roll for, because he might get a scouting order, and that would help us to reveal this unit. He doesn't. He's got a cover and assault's no good. He's got a move to cover. Oh, I don't want to do that. He's right in the, out in the open there, even with cover. You know, he's going to get mashed on a 7 plus by this LMG and then he's got to face whatever's in there potentially. So let's just wait a minute before we do anything else. That's us done. The German unit then, the LMG, will still looking at these three hexes here. You know, he's sat there, hasn't seen us yet, waiting. We scouted him, remember, so he's just waiting for some for the, uh, the, you know, the US attack, not arrived yet. Turn seven, now we're now into the VP earning categories. If we're playing as a one-off mission, all you've got to do is win. You know, win by turn 10, which is you know, a challenge in itself. I'm doing pretty well here, but um, trust me, I lose more than I win at the moment at this game. Still um, getting used to some of the tactics myself. There's so much information in this game. And I don't mean, I mean, the rules are you know, more complex than they were for the first game, but not overly complex. But it does mean there's an awe because there's more units and more things you can do, like smoke and call in artillery and stuff, assault and that sort of stuff. You know, there's so much to think about. And just the amount of information on the map about where the cover is, where you should be attacking from. You know, the fact that a tank could appear, it can't anymore because the turn mark is too high. And artillery can appear, so you'll never want to move too far away from the A-hex because if it appears, we've got to come back and destroy it before it starts laying down fire on us all. You know, there's loads and loads of information, tactical information to think about. Um, so it does take a, a lot of getting used to in terms of what, you know, the best way to approach. And, and, and that is often thought of on the fly because it does depend on what units are revealed as you're going along. As you've seen here, you know, these minefields have had a real effect on this game, but I've played plenty of missions where there are no minefields. Um, but instead, I'm getting artillery and heavy machine guns and things. Half tracks. All right, let's um, get back to us then. So I'm going to start over here with the bazooka and hopefully get him rallied. Yeah, we've got a two there, so I'm going to take the two for the bazooka. Remember, you can only do the perform the first order, but that is the rally order. So the bazooka rallies and that puts him back to full health. Okay, that's nice and easy to rally. I don't, you know, I don't want units to be wasted or anything, but it does mean we've wasted a turn, of course, on that bazooka. Rifles three, let's do them. They've got a three, four. Okay, now I, I could kind of suicide him with a four or a three, in fact, and move him up into this hex here. And that would reveal all of these question marks. So I would then know exactly what I've got to face for the rest of the game. 
and I could, you know, I could do, I could do a grenade attack then on one of them, uh, which might get rid of it, or I could take cover when he's in the woods as well. So that give him a lot of protection or, or plus two protection. But you know, with three units then firing at him, I think that's going to be problematic. I'd rather get some of these in to help out over here. Um, I think, or should I move him here? That's probably the best bet, isn't it? Let's do that. Let's do a move and rifle. Oh, sorry, move and grenade order. So let's move the rifles into that field. The bockage here would normally add plus one to an attack, but not for a grenade attack. Remember, it's always a seven plus. He's chucking it over the top there. Uh, you know, we've got a guy up to the bockage, spotting where he is and, chuck, you know, saying back to his mates, just lob it, you know, to the back of the field or whatever. So uh, this is going to reveal this unit here. And that is going to be, would you believe it, a six. And that means it's another minefield. That's uh, unheard of, really. Does mean the rifles then have to test for mines, and they've got an eight, which means they have been hit, and that's going to slow us down again. So the rifle squad, you know, a couple of them have gone through, gone through that bockage, uh, maybe to have a look what's there, and they've stepped on a mine, and that's caused problems. And again, you can see the the lower morale unit there has you know got a, a figure less, and he's outlined in orange, a bit paler, just to show that morale is low. Now can't chuck their grenade, of course. There's nothing to chuck a grenade at. The bazooka team then, what we're going to do with those, let's have a look. we got double two, so they could rally or seek cover. They don't need to rally. They could seek cover. I think I'll re-roll it just to see. Oh, will I re-roll it? Is there any point? I'm not going to move him there, I don't think, because he's still going to be revealing two question marks. Or do I? Do I just go all out? I could move the bazooka squad up and then I could move all these up and see where I get. I'm, you know, I might do that actually. Go for a go for a nice high victory. Pretend I'm in a, in a, if I could tack this onto my existing campaign, I might just do that. Right. So let's, yeah, let's do, roll again for the bazooka. Don't want the double twos. It got double three. That's no good. Roll again. Okay, that's better. I'm going to take the six rather than re-rolling. So I'll take the six. That's a move and fire for the bazooka. So he's going to move up into that hex there and that will reveal both of these so let's see what's in the woods first of all and that's an 11 okay now 11 is artillery uh, and we've just moved out of that hex which has vacated it so in fact german artillery will appear somehow we missed it when we got there or it's just arrived or it's in a different part of the woodland but the artillery unit is there uh so that appears there. That resolves that question mark, just like in the same way as a tank. It's a shame that that is there. But there we go. It is. And that will fire at the end of the turn at every US unit that is not either in woodland or in the in the uh, in a building's hex. So in other words, anything it can see. Of course, that is only that unit there, but I'm, I'm risking losing that altogether if I don't do something about it. So my bazooka is now going to fire... And of course, it could fire at the art. Oh, hang on, we still got to reveal the. Sorry, let's keep going. We've got to reveal the uh, unit in the farm there, up on the hill. So this hill farm has a seven in it. So we've got an uh, an LMG. I mean, how you know how very Normandy is that? Yeah, an LMG flings the barn door open, and there it is behind some hay bales. Opens fire. So we've got an LMG up in this farm on the hill. Not great. Now that's going to hit us with a basic six, but it will be reduced to five because it's on this hill. It's got height advantage, although we have got woods cover. So we've now got the chance to fire. OK, we can fire at artillery because that's one of the things a bazooka can fire at. You're obviously firing at the actual artillery piece itself, whereas, you know, if we attacked it with a rifle squad, they'd be you know, dealing with the guys that are operating the artillery. Um, or we can fire at this LMG unit. And again, we can do that because it's in a building, of course. So we could put a bazooka shell into that barn and take this LMG out. So let's just work out what the best shot is. So a bazooka attacks on a 7 plus. Uh, so that would be 8 for the artillery because it's in woods. For the LMG, it would be a basic 7. Uh, sorry, it'd be 8 for the artillery minus 1 because we've got support. So as in the first in fact there's other things as well let me do this properly seven plus to hit the artillery eight because it's in woods as in the first game you get support if there is an adjacent us unit even low morale so they're deemed to be helping in that so the eight becomes seven so it's minus one for each each adjacent unit wherever they are uh, whether they're in the you know the, the fire zone or, or whatever of the enemy unit doesn't matter 
And US units don't themselves have a fire zone, by the way, so they can always shoot in any direction. So that would be minus one for that. Uh, also, we've got mortar support. Remember, this mortar supports two hexes away, one, two. So that's also supporting. So seven becomes eight, becomes seven, becomes six, five. So five plus to hit this artillery. I'm just thinking, did the mortar unit move? It did. So that's a penalty for the mortar. Sorry, the bazooka moved as well. So it's a five plus one, of course. So, so much happening on this one activation, I'm losing track. So the bazooka squad is actually going to be hitting on a six plus the artillery, or it can put a shell into here. It'll be seven, eight, nine, because it's in a building. That's fairly straightforward. There's no mortar support. There's no rifle support. Uh, so nine or so I think we'll go for the artillery just double check seven eight seven six five uh, and six because it moved so it's a six plus to hit the artillery and we've got an eight so fortunately we have taken out the artillery piece straight away we've done the rifles we've done the bazooka which so I think we did the rifles did we do the rifles this turn no we didn't did we do the rifles this turn Yes, because they moved there, didn't they? And tried to do a grenade attack and found the mines, got hit. OK, so that's those two done. So over here then, I say we're really going for this, I think. We are, because my bazooka team is in trouble with that LMG up there, but we're going to move into this road hex here, this clear hex, and try and take out this LMG. So rifles, let's do rifles one first, keep it in logical order. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to do, yeah, so three is good. So again, that's a move and grenade. I've had a lot of these in this particular mission. There's only a three that allows you to move and grenade, so you're not always going to get it. But he's got it. Uh, so he chucks a seven, and he does it again. Wow. Never failed a grenade attack. Must have been in grenade training this week, my guys, because that's a great result for them. And that clears away for my MG, hopefully, to move in. Can he do that? One five. He can't actually with that. No, he's got rally cover or fire fire. So that's a new thing for MGs in this version of fields. And normally they can fire twice look, which can be really useful if you're adjacent to an enemy unit. But they're not. Rifles two. Get a one four. We don't need to scout anything else because we've revealed now. We've only got this one unit left. The four is a move to cover. So they'll move up there and they find cover in this hex. Okay, next to the road somewhere in a dip or a few rocks, fallen tree, bushes, whatever it might be, but they're there. MG's still in this farm. And the mortar itself, we need to get that moving up. Two, four. And that can't move either. He's struggled a bit moving this mortar in this game. Even mortar's really useful. I'm lucky I didn't need it. If I'd have found a load of units, I'd have needed that a lot more. But fortunately, I found four minefields and dealt with them fairly well, except, you know, except this one. We did all right. That's the end for me. The LMG will then fire back. LMGs say fire on a six because he's on a hill. That'll be a five. But because he's in woods, that's back to a six. Gets plus one for that. So six to hit. And they've rolled a four. I've been pretty lucky, I think you'll agree, in this particular mission. You know, all my grenade attacks have hit, despite being you know, around about 50-50, just under maybe. Or just over, I should say, to hit. Um, yeah, I've got away with a few minefield attacks, didn't I? Uh, yeah, and the enemy units have been shocking in their hitting, so I've been a bit lucky. Yeah, that's good news, then. I'm not going to complain, of course. Um, that's the end of their turn, and the turn tracker moves to eight. Okay, if I can get a victory this turn, I'm on for 12 victory points. That's pretty good, that. That's pretty good. I'm going to do rifles three. I guess a three, four... OK, so decisions. They can't rally with that. They can move. Remember, they can only do the first thing. So three and four both move orders, actually, for a low morale unit. So question is, do I want to move them into here to provide support for the attack on the LMG on the basis that we're going to clear it? I'm sure we're going to clear it. The more units I get there, the better. I think I am. Obviously, it's a risk. If I don't destroy the LMG, it's going to fire back at this unit and could destroy it. But I'm, I'm going to do I'd rather have rallied it, but I'm going to do that. Move it up. So that's that done. Then I'm going to move rifles one. Oh, hang on, cancel that. Am I going to move the mortar? No, I'm not going to move the mortar yet because it, it, can't, I mean, it can't even reach anyway. So I don't, I've, even if it moves into this farm, it, it can't support an attack on this LMG because it's one, two, three hexes away. So there's no point doing that. Rifles one, get a two, four. That's a bit um, of a shame because there's, uh, there's a fire order. There's rally and fire, but they can't fire from where they are. And four is moved to cover. I think I'm going to do that again. I'm going to risk it even though they will also get attacked if that LMG fires bad. I'm starting to feel more nervous about it than I was. I've still got the bazooka, of course. Rifles two. 
let's get them up. Okay, they've got a six. I'm going to take the six. So the rifles too are going to move. So they'll lose, lose their cover because it's not. A, this is not a cover order. They're move, they've got fire and move. They're going to move first and then fire. So rifles two are firing in this LMG. They would need a nine to hit. That's the basic rifle hit. So nine to hit. 10, 11, because they're in a farm. The hill it doesn't give defensive bonuses, but the farm does. So that's 11 to hit. However, I then can reduce that to 10, 9, 8, because all my buddies are firing in there as well. So 11, 10, 10, 9, 8. So 8 to hit for rifles too. And of course, of course I'm getting the 8. It's easy, Mike. It's easy. There you go. Destroyed that. That potentially brings the game to an end. What I can do is play out the turn. or In fact, the turn does play out. Obviously, you win by clearing enemy units, so there won't be any German units in the German activation phase. But, for example, if I had somebody in a minefield and I didn't manage to move them out this turn, the mines would still go at the end of that turn. So you have to finish the turn. It also allows me... I've already done Rifles 3, but if I hadn't, I could now try to rally that unit back to full health. And that's important, not for a one-off game, but if you're playing the campaign, it's important to get your guys rallied up if you win uh, especially even if you're losing it's best to get them rallied up before the end of the game if you can okay and very quickly i'll explain why i've won this game now we're on turn eight if you are playing a campaign you can see here this is a campaign how clearly that um pencil marking show on whoops doesn't help if i wobble the camera does it i think looking at the camera you can probably just make that out okay let me i'll pick that up uh, whilst I'm explaining it. So you get a campaign sheet in this game. I will try and put this on Board Game Geek. I've submitted the game at the time of making this video, but it does seem to be taking quite a long time to come to arrive. I'm not sure they must have a backlog or something. Now uh, you can see here that I've played mission 732611. And you can see I've had a one lost, one lost, lost result. So only one two out of five there. I've recorded here the final morale for each unit. So in the first game I won they were all normal morale and you can see here I've got a couple of low morale and a K which is killed in action so I lost my MG that turn I won they were all normal morale here again I, I lost but they were all normal but I did again lose my MG uh, this one I had two rifle squads killed in action bit of a disaster a low morale rifle squad really took a hammering on the rifles but the special teams survived so you get certain win uh, you, certain vic you get victory points for winning and I've won here on turn eight and that means I get uh, 12 victory points you can see that's a good win my last win uh, was 10 victory points which was turn 9 I had an 8 victory point win which was turn 10 so you can see how the game's well balanced in terms of you know generally you're going to finish up here the rules do say if you finish in turns before turn 7 you get fi the 15 victory points anyway but I challenge anyone to ever finish one of these missions in six turns <laughs> it's going to be really difficult to do that um, so you get the victory points. And then you, what you have to do then is spend victory points according to, to, to replenish your force back up to full strength. Okay, So I've got a low morale unit here, so I would have to spend one victory point. The rules explain what you do here, but one victory point to do that. If you lose a unit, you have to spend three victory points to bring back or refresh that particular unit to full morale and you know, back into existence kind of thing with reinforcements, I guess. Right. So you're then starting the next mission of the campaign every time with a full platoon. Starting any of these missions without that, you you, you just have no chance, basically. You need the six units to achieve any of these missions. So you, you have to do that. You don't get a choice. You have to spend your VPs to get that back up. Um, uh, and then you write in here your sort of net VP, so what you got minus what you spent, and then you have a running total at the end here like that also if you lose obviously you don't get the vps on the track uh, and instead you will lose um, two vps for every question mark that is still on the board at the time of defeat and in other words when you get you know the end of turn 10 would be defeat so if i if i'd finish my mission like that then i would lose instead of getting any victory points i would lose two for the question mark and one for the rifles unit so i would have a minus three so you can see here this minus five when I lost mission three is likely to be two question marks and a German unit, you know, or a question mark and three German units or something like that that I had left. Uh, sorry, there, I should, uh, no, there, yeah. And then I had to spend more to bring my troops back to full health, which meant I lost 10 VPs for that particular mission, which took me from eight back you know, down to, to minus two or negative two, if you prefer. Uh, so, you know, you can see the VPs up and down, up and down, up and down, and then you have to see what you get. So for this one, I'm going to just quickly write them in and I can have a quick look at what I got. Uh, if I can find my pencil, that is. It seems to have done a runner. 
Here's one. Okay, so I think I finished with everybody on normal health except my rifles three. So they were low morale. Everybody else was normal. This actually, I mean, this was mission three and you're not supposed to play the same mission twice in a campaign. If I'd thought about it, I would have rolled for it, you know, done a different mission, but never mind. It's only an example. Uh, so I've won that mission and I achieved 12 victory points because I finished on turn eight. I had to spend to, to replenish my uh, rifles three unit. I've had to spend one victory point to do that. So I still scored 11 and that fortunately for my pride takes me from a total of minus six victory points up to plus five victory points. Okay. And I finish the game with five victory points there. Okay. And I can look at the chart then at the end if I wish. I can take that a victory. Anything is, you know, it says anything positive is a victory, victory. But I can see here one to five is a win. It says you have proved that you can do this and you have stories to tell. Excellent. If I'd got one more victory point, I'd have been six to seven, six to eleven, which would have told me that I return a hero and my men respect me. I'm sure they respect me anyway. Why wouldn't they? But I certainly have stories to tell and I can do this, which is good because I designed the game. So it's always comforting to know, isn't it? All right. What if I could have changed one of these losses into a victory? I could well have got up towards the 12 point win, in which case my promotion would have awaited me at HQ. It says, congratulations, Captain. But for now, I remain a lieutenant. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Cheers. Bye.